The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, wants senior bank executives to declare their assets. This is in line with the Bank Employees Declaration of Assets Act 1986. The EFCC had given the bankers a deadline of June 14 that was disobeyed and the commission has extended the deadline till the end of the month. The executive chairman of Center for Anti-Corruption and Open Leadership, Mr. Debo Adeniro, is joining us on the show this morning. Good morning, Mr. Adeniro. Good morning, my sister. Thank you for having me. All right. We know that this, this act has been, you know, in place for many years now. But, you know, what we've seen is that bankers have, you know, disobeyed this time and time again. What do you think BAWA and the EFCC can do differently this time to ensure compliance? Well, um, thank you very much. Uh, first and foremost, um, everybody that has nothing to hide uh, should not have been, <coughs> excuse me, afraid of uh, asset declaration. Um, as a matter of fact, what we recommended is that all senior officers in every establishment it doesn't have to be only financial institutions uh, should be ready to declare their assets. And uh, uh, the authorities are supposed to verify these assets. We expect the Code of Conduct Bureau to have taken the bull by the horn and insist that asset declaration should be a precondition for appointments to any public office, especially when it had to be at the level of senior uh, senior officials. But that is not to be, because uh, all agencies in Nigeria are very weak. Uh, weak, uh, technically, they, are, they don't seem to be well-trained, they don't seem to be well-funded, they don't seem to be uh, were motivated to do the right thing, and that is the reason why laxity uh, persists. What I think that uh, EFCC under power should do differently is to evoke the provisions of his section seven, uh, sub one or so, uh, that gives its power to uh, investigate anybody in Nigeria that is uh, found to be living above his means. Uh, also, the EFCC under Bauer should activate the instrumentality of SCUMO, that is the Special Control Unit against Money Laundering, and ensure that every corporate organization registers under that uh, platform so that uh, illicit financial flows can be adequately you know controlled a number of uh, private sector business owners have been arguing that oh uh, the declaration of assets should apply to those that are occupying public office alone that is not correct because most of the fraudulent practices, most of the corruption that have been taking place in uh, public offices have been assisted by the private sector. Most of these uh, public officials cannot launder their money by themselves. They launder through financial institutions like banks, insurance, uh, accounting of uh, accounting firms, and so on and so forth. Several other professionals help them to launder this money. If all of these professionals and uh, institutions are registered under SCUMO, they, they wouldn't have found it easy to launder money. So what they should do differently is to ensure that the letters of our laws are obeys, I mean, are obeyed by everybody without exception. And that uh, the Code of Conduct Bureau uh, that is saddled with the 
as a declaration, I mean, uh, 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 saddled with the task of ensuring that every public official declared their asset should also be uh, a muzzled. They should be given more power. They should, they, their capacity should be properly built so that they will be able to do the work without fear or favor. And they will be able to verify every asset that is declared by public official so that at the end of the day, there wouldn't be cases of anticipatory declaration or fraudulent or under declaration of assets. And the Code of Conduct Tribunal should also be activated, uh, better strengthened, better fortified for the task of ensuring that everybody that comes uh, against the provisions of Code of Conduct Bureau should be properly uh, investigated, tried, and punished as is written in the books. All right, uh, Mr. Denero, I, I want to um, ask about, um, of course, still with this uh, declaration by the EFCC, do you think this might have anything to do with the ex-MD of bank uh, PH, uh, PHB, uh, Francis Atuche, who has been given a six-year jail sentence for money laundering? You know, is this uh, some of the effects and, you know, fallout of, you know, that uh, ruling? Of course, um, uh, the reason why Atuche, the wife, and uh, uh, the other person were able to uh, get away with the crime for so long was also because the institutions that are supposed to be uh, watching over the finances in the corporate institutions <clears throat> excuse me, yeah. are not effective. If they have been efficient and effective, the crime wouldn't have even gotten to the level of uh, tens of billions of naira before they are detected. And when they were detected, it wouldn't have taken so long for the investigations to be carried out uh, before uh, prosecution would take place. And uh, there wouldn't have been uh, legal gymnastics uh, the way it happened in several courts before convictions uh, were achieved. But um, because of weak institutions, um, because of pervasive corruption in our country, a lot of people will want to key, key into the uh, corruption enclave. Uh, once they know that somebody has hit it big in the, in the field of corruption, a number of professionals will jump at them, including bankers, they are ready to help them launder the money. And that must have been the reason why Atuche and his wife are able to uh, corner such money. There are so many tricks, tactics, and uh, ungodly strategies that bankers have devised you know, to launder money or to corner money that they think that the owners have no access to or uh, is not ready to use at a particular time or the owner has died or something like that. Now, so many occasions are that uh, members of family, beneficiary of a dead relation, will go to the bank and the bankers will bamboozle them with all the uh, jargons, banking jargons, and frustrate those who should be beneficiary of that estate with a view to cornering that amount of money that the late uh, relative had left in the banks. These are the reasons why many of them are stupendously rich beyond the salaries and emolument and other emoluments that they are entitled to. So it is not just because of our teaching. 
there are several other bankers that are still being investigated and being protected by their colleagues who are in various financial institutions. So the EFCC should ensure that they leave no stone unturned, ensure that uh, several other bankers who have run down several uh, banking institutions because of their selfish uh, 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 acquisition of um, material wealth, they should be brought to book the way Atuche has just been brought to book. They should do due diligence after them. I mean, due diligence on them, ensuring that they uh, present watertight cases uh, with a view to making sure that those who contributed those money into their banks, uh, who ordinarily should be beneficiary of uh, loans and other support from the bank, do not have access to such loans and other support because the bankers themselves have cornered the, uh, uh, the, the, the human gums amount of money that uh, they have deposited in the bank. The EFCC and other law enforcement agencies should ensure that they are adequately punished by any means that is possible. Okay, um, Mr. Daniel, you've been talking about, you know, weak institutions, lack of funding, lack of training, lack of motivation, and that's why we've been seeing this right. challenge, you know, regarding the declaration of assets. So if this is an institutional challenge, do you think that, you know, Abdul Rashid Bawa can create a total turnaround in just the next few years that he's EFCC chairman? No, uh, Abu Rashid Bawa cannot do it alone. He has just laid the foundation for a process that is supposed to climax in uh, stronger institutions. Uh, if every banker declares his or her assets, uh, it will be easy to see what benchmark or where they are starting, the entry point and the exit point and it will be easy to see the difference between and justify it if uh, the assets so declared uh, can be justified by the amount of money that is supposed to be uh, legitimately earned by the person involved. So it's just a foundation that he has laid. But if the foundation is solidly put together, you uh, will bear with me that uh, the society will begin uh, the process of sanitization in the areas of financial dealings. If bankers cannot hold more money than they deserve, it means that they will not be able to assist uh, public officials who could have stolen from public covers to launder their money. To launder the money is supposed to be like presenting a filthy uh, uh, money as clean one in the banking books. So the bankers know how to place such money in such a way that the prime eyes of uh, anti-corruption agencies, uh, especially uh, the, uh, what's the name? Uh, um, uh, the monitoring units of uh, the anti-corruption agencies will not be able to see it as illicit transfer or illicit banked money. So he, uh, he is just laying the foundation for uh, sanitization of the monetary sector of the economy. So if he does it well, it will help us to achieve a greater height. Okay, so also um, we know that Bawa gave this deadline, you know, for bankers to declare their assets June 1st, 2021. They disobeyed that. He moved it to June 14th. Bankers also disobeyed that order. He's now extended it to June 30th. If by June 30th, uh, bankers and top executives, and this is about 120 bank MDs and top executives, still fail to declare their assets. What options are available to the EFCC to ensure that they, that they do so? 
Well, uh, what the, the option that is available to them is to round up those who refuse to declare their assets, hand them over to the judicial section, and ensure that they are properly prosecuted. Because it is the provision of the law that they are uh, violating, not that uh, a Bauer's uh, invention. It is not, the law has, has always been there. It's just that those that are manning our institutions have not been able to develop adequate political will or even public will to implement those laws. If Bama, maybe as a young man, is ready to stamp his feet on the sand of time and insist that the laws of our land must be obeyed, why not? Other institutions should support him. The uh, ICPC should also support because primarily ICPC should ensure that all the uh, inflows and outflows from all the MDAs are, mo are properly monitored. And if they are monitored, the, uh, those who could have dipped their hands into these public coffers won't be able to keep it in the bank. Then like I said the other time too, Code of Conduct Bureau should also do their own work because primarily they should ensure that everybody declares assets. So if you know all of this, then the court will be the final arbiter. If it were to be Code of Conduct Bureau's uh, exercise, then Code of Conduct Tribunal will be the final arbiter so that at the end of the day, justice would not only uh, be said to have been done, it will be seen to have been done. So judiciary is the, uh, is the last hope of the common man. And oh. that is where Bauer should take them to. All right, Mr. Adenero, um, I think that's also, you know, it's, it's also important that we bring up conversations with regards, um, you know, like something you've mentioned, the institutions and the machinery that should checkmate corruption not just in the banking sector now, but in every other sector across Nigeria, uh, which we have lacked for a long time. You know, people always talk about customs and immigration and our ports and, you know, how there's billions and billions of money that just continues to disappear into thin air um, every other day. Um, so, you know, what would you say we as a country or Nigeria needs to start to do to, you know, fix this machinery that should make it difficult to steal not, you know, of course, you know, be trying to uh, prosecute after stealing and, you know, hoping that the courts will be able to, you know, do justice uh, to uh, people who have been suspected of stealing. So how can we fix the machinery that makes it difficult to steal, not just in the banking sector, uh, but in every other MDA and in the political sector also? Exactly where I was going before I was directed back to the banking sector. Uh, I was saying that every public official, every senior officer, even in the private sector, must be made to declare their assets from time to time. Uh, because uh, if they don't do it, private sectors are the ones helping the public sector to launder the money they steal from public coffers. Uh, banking sector generally uh, belong to the private sector. Only maybe central bank and a few other, maybe industrial bank and things like that, uh, institutions like that that belong to the federal government. And state government don't even seem to have any bank. So most of these people in the private sector, sector and other professionals, I mentioned it the other time, like uh, lawyers, like accountants, like bankers, like estate um, developers, they help these people to loan their money. Uh, most of the buildings you see around are not just because the owners need those buildings, but they do not, uh, they do not find it easy to keep the illicit money. That is why they invested in estate uh, acquisition or uh, construction. So these are ways by which money are laundered. And the prying the eyes of the EFCC and other anti-corruption agencies, 
should not neglect those other sectors. Also, all of the other agencies like uh, Customs, like uh, NAVDAC, like uh, all the regulatory agencies, law enforcement agencies, and, and security agencies should also be monitored, including the military, because we have had several accusations against the military that the money that were meant to provide for the soldiers that were fighting the war have been uh, pocketed by those who have the who have access to it. So all of these people should be under perpetual watch of the anti-corruption agency. There should be interagency cooperation so that if somebody stays somewhere, he will not be able to launder it through another means. So if this is done, there will be effectiveness in the application of all of the uh, uh, legal framework that are being on the ground. For example, all of the uh, uh, institutional framework or maybe uh, legal framework or what do we call it now, that have been put in place like TSA, like BVN, like uh, Skumun that I mentioned the other time, like Act 2, if they have been working well, it will be difficult for people to be uh, to commit corruption crimes. Like you said, um, agencies should be more proactive rather than you know finding those who have committed the crime with a view to taking them to court. If they are proactive enough, they will have monitored the uh, movement of, I mean, financial movement within the economy to ensure that illicit financial flows are properly I mean, controlled. And that will have reduced the funding of terrorism, kidnapping, banditry that we see in our country. It will have, it will have of also controlled the, uh, the, the, the level of insecurity, will have brought the level of security in our country under perpetual control. So if TSA had been allowed to work, nobody, no public official will have been able to open uh, a separate bank account apart from the federation account to, with the view to taking in revenue that should be accrued to the federal government. If Act 2 has been working, Act 2 is an uh, anti-corruption and transparency unit of ICPC. They are supposed to have a desk in all the MDAs. If this has been working, it means that the inflow and outflow of resources in every MDA will be monitored by that agency. And that would have made it difficult for anybody to engage in illicit procurement or contract awarding uh, without the agency knowing and uh, taking the proper action even before it becomes too late. Okay. If, um, um, uh, Mr. Mr. Adeniro, uh, the, 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 yes. <clears throat> yeah, um, apologies to cut yes. you short, but just to quickly wrap up. Um, basically, you're saying that um, asset declaration is somewhat the ultimate way to check corruption in Nigeria. Uh, but how, what would you say, you know, other public officials can learn from the Water On Again case regarding falsely declaring their assets? Well, I've mentioned it that uh, if institutions have been working, when a public official declares an asset, the CCB, Code of Conduct Rule, should verify if it was a true declaration or false declaration of asset. It can also be anticipatory declaration when the public official knows that it's likely to steal when it gets to the public office. So if they are verified, it will be easy for the agency to know what was declared when the public official was going to the office. And they will also declare when they are getting out of office. So the difference will be measured against what the official earned when he was in the office. So it will have been, it will have made it easy for anti-corruption agencies to determine whether the 
uh, official had helped himself to uh, an amount that is not supposed to get into him, or he has been an honest person. And what we have recommended is that for those who have worked with all honesty, they should be rewarded. Not that they should uh, be, I mean, those who have uh, destroyed our economy through illicit transfers and all of that, financing terrorism and all these uh, illegalities in our land should be, uh, uh, we should be careful not to award criminals, those who have assisted in aiding and abetting criminality should be isolated for punishment. Okay. That those who have been very honest and those who have been shining examples of what public office uh, holders should be, should be the ones that will be awarded. And those who, uh, who uh, are attracted, who are nominated for national honors should be subjected to public scrutiny so that if people have any allegations against them or maybe they have information about what they have done wrongly in the past, they should be brought to the fore and such people should not be given national honor. And that may be a way of stemming the tide of corruption in our country. It is not only asset declaration, it is also honest, uh, modest living. If people are not so greedy, if people are not so avaricious, uh, uh, those that are coming up will not take example that they want to be stupendously rich overnight. And there will be less of Yahoo Yahoo and all these uh, Yahoo Plus that we have been seeing all around. I mean, uh, there would have been less ritual killing. Some people kill for nothing. They think that they will get rich overnight, and at the end of the day, they don't get rich anywhere. It right, is because they are looking at the examples of those who have corner cornered our collective patrimony. Yeah. And that should not be allowed to host way in our society anymore. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, it seems like there's a lot that needs to be done from you know what we've spoken about this morning, but we hope that we can continue this conversation and, of course, effect change at some point. Thank you for speaking with Thank us you. Uh, this morning. It is my pleasure. Thank you for having me. All right. All right, next up, we'll be speaking with someone from the education sector to discuss uh, a strike that ASU is threatening to go on over the non-payment of salaries. Do stay with us.